Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. Tonight, after Liberia's government was rocked by the reported disappearance of over $100 million worth of freshly printed notes, this week the country's central bank says it was all a mistake and the cash can now be accounted for. Also, French judges slammed the historical mistreatment of Harkis. Now, they were Algerians who fought for France in Algeria's civil war, but were forced into squalid camps when they came here in the 60s and 70s. Unprecedented judgment awards compensation to the son of one former soldier. And Tunisia's milk is drying up. A number of factors are hitting dairy farmers hard, and the resultant shortfall in products led to the rationing of milk in supermarkets. But first, the mystery surrounding $100 million in newly printed notes that Liberia's government said had gone missing continues. On Wednesday, the central bank insisted that the money could be accounted for and was safely tucked away in its reserve vaults. Now, last month, Monrovia said that two separate shipments of cash amounting to about 5% of the country's GDP had gone AWOL from the port that they'd been shipped into. That's sparked protests last week and the biggest political crisis since President George Weah took office back in January. Dozens of bank officials had been hit with travel bans, but now the central bank says it was all a misunderstanding. Masakana brings us more from Monrovia. What seems to be a, a, mystery, a mystery happened yesterday by the central bank hosting a press conference uh, saying that there was no missing money. And the public was really shocked by that because the, the central bank comment kind of like contradicts previous statements that have been made by the Justice Minister of uh, Frank Musadin and the Information Minister Lee Yujinangwe, who earlier stated that there were money missing and there was investigation ongoing. And central bank being in the midst of the whole investigation coming up yesterday to say that there was no money missing, uh, that they had the money in a reserve vault, and they took delivery of the money, $15 billion, almost $100 million. They took delivery of it from 2016 to 2018, and there was no money missing. And it created some kind of reaction. So what is this reaction? Are people satisfied with the central bank's explanation? Do they feel like it's being totally transparent? Oh, there are many reactions from the public. Some people feel that because Central Bank is the one that is being accused uh, of this whole situation. And some government officials, like you said, there is travel ban on most of the, the, the official, about 35 percent, there are travel banks on them. So if they're coming up to say that no money missing, the people think that they're not being transparent. A lot of people think they're not being transparent because the president, Judge Weir, announced that investigations are ongoing to establish the mysterious disappearance of uh, the $100 million. So with the investigation still ongoing without concluding the investigation and Central Bank coming out to have a press conference, you know, kind of contradict and, and, and undermine uh, the whole investigation that the president had announced earlier. People think that they are not being transparent yet. They should have waited for the investigation to be concluded before they come up to say there was no money missing. But however, the Central Bank governor, uh, Nathaniel Petri, he said that if there are any further investigations, they'll be waiting to cooperate. Now, it's a first. France's top court said that the state will have to pay compensation to the son of an Algerian who fought for France during Algeria's independence war. Called Harkis, many of the soldiers were forced to stay in terrible conditions in camps when they arrived back in France in the 60s and 70s. They were harshly condemned by judges on Wednesday, and the decision may well to lead to more claims. Nicolas Chemin has more. For the first time, France's highest legal authority, the Conseil d'État, has said the state will have to pay 15,000 euros to the son of a Harki. The Harkis are the Algerians who fought alongside French troops during Algeria's independence war between 1954 and 1962. The court slammed the living conditions in the camp that hosted the plaintiff when he arrived in France in the 1960s. It said they had a severe psychological impact on him. 60,000 Harkis came to France but 90,000 others were abandoned in Algeria, where they were seen as traitors and many were killed. After the court's decision, we spoke to one representative of Harkis who said 15,000 euros was too little. It's a first step, but there are many people in the same situation. We want the state to recognize our status via a vote in parliament. 
I think all the families will now file a lawsuit, but not individual ones, all of us together in one. Last month, the government gave medals to former Haki fighters, and it promised 40 million euros for their pensions and for those whose children live in poverty. A few days earlier, Emmanuel Macron recognized the role of the French army in the disappearance of Maurice Audin, a communist who opposed the conflict in Algeria. The French president's aim is clear. He's trying to please the two sides that fought so bitterly during the independence war. Now, US First Lady Melania Trump visited the infamous Door of No Return at Cape Coast Castle in Ghana on Wednesday. The door is the structure's final exit towards the Atlantic Ocean, 17th century slave fortress, was where many Africans were held before being shipped off and forced into slavery overseas. On the second day of her tour of Africa, Trump laid a wreath and vowed never to forget the story she was told about the history of the spot. She'll be visiting Malawi, Kenya and Egypt before returning to the US over the weekend. Tunisia's milk is being rationed in supermarkets. Families are being limited to about one or two packs of semi-skimmed each because of a shortage in dairy products. Now, Tunisia's had to import about 10 million litres to make up for the shortfall. The problem is the result of a crisis in dairy farming in the country. Our team takes a closer look. In grocery stores in Tunis, cleaning products are on the shelves where the milk section once was. The products now being strictly rationed. I put the milk I managed to get in the warehouse. That way, when a client comes in, I can give him a pack or two and he doesn't go himself and take a whole lot. The stock can then last a whole week. Tunisia's dairy farmers have been hit hard by drought and by the rising cost of livestock feed. The problem we're facing is the price of raw materials. Every day we see an increase. It has gone up 30% these last six months, while the price of milk only increased by 15%. Aziz has worked for 23 years on this farm. Today he's thinking of throwing in the towel. Honestly, I don't have the energy anymore. At the moment, I've got rid of half my herd. The production of milk depends on the lactation that follows after a cow gives birth. Tunisia's milk shortages are also partly down to the breed of cow used by most farmers. For decades, most have imported Holsteins, but they struggle in Tunisia's climate and become pregnant less often. Over the years, they become less cost-effective. This farmer anticipated the issue and switched to the better adapted Tarine breed 15 years ago. They have a much longer production lifespan. Here we have animals that give 10 to 12 lactations, while Holsteins under Tunisian conditions have only between three and four calves during their lifetime. Karim has successfully stabilized his business, and the government is now encouraging the import of breeds like his. But for many farmers, the slowdown is already too far gone. Many are now selling their cattle off in Algeria. Nearly 30,000 cows have left this year. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care.